All right, Ted. So I brought you on today. And by the way, he's from Ted's Takes on Wrestling. Go follow him on YouTube. Go watch all of his shorts. Go watch his full length videos. I wanted to talk about uh, loss today. Roman Reigns lost his father. And I have a quick quote I want to read before we get started, because I think it kind of sums up everything really, really nicely. Uh, the quote is, grieving is a necessary passage and difficult transition into finally letting go of sorrow, but it's not a permanent rest stop. And I think that's a really, really beautiful way to put things because losing a loved one is really, really hard to explain when it comes to the grieving process and how how you, ev people that are diff different people handle it. Because there's not a manual that tells you, hey, you just lost somebody in your life that is this important to you. How do you handle that and move on and continue to do the things that you have to do? So... With Roman Reigns, a lot of wrestling fans are really clamoring for a return, maybe faster than he needs to return. Because what was he on? Three years straight of being a champion and a right. long time and a lot of work. And he deserves the rest. But on top of that, he's hit with the loss of his father. And that is a very, very hard thing to overcome. I brought you on today because I know me and you have both lost loved ones and parents and... I think there's a place in talking about loss and talking about grief that isn't super, super publicized because it's something that we just don't do on podcasts, but Bruh. it's, it's something that like, like I said, I don't really know how to even start the conversation to explain it. Like how does one deal with grief? Well, first let me say that a lot of wrestling fans are stupid and selfish and they just want their favorite wrestlers whether it be like Roman Reigns going through this or even uh, a few years ago when Becky Lynch, you know, just had the baby and everybody was posting, oh, she's going to be back at the Royal Rumble and all that. I mean, she just had a baby, you know. Uh, these people forget that they are uh, real people too. They're not comic book characters. They're not animated. They they have real lives and they have real problems. And so that's the thing. We, we you know, when people are going through something or – like that, you know, uh, they might need some time. And like I said, everybody, it's different. You know, some people need to take time off. Some people are, are those that just dive right back into their profession or their life or whatever. But we don't know. I mean, this could be, yes, Roman could be back at SummerSlam or it might be the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania before he's ready to come back. I mean, you know, you got to look at not only did he just lose his father, I mean, before he went on this championship reign and even then, with his limited schedule, we still have to consider the the thing that he fought leukemia before that. So it's like, you know, give the guy a break. It's kind of mind blowing in a way how tough he really is. Because yeah. you know, I, I, I mean, when I lost when I lost my mom, I kind of like shelled it. Like I don't know about you, but I put all that pain inside and just shelled it and tried to keep moving forward. And that's the worst way to go about it. I think that's the age old way that most people do deal with it, though, is just suck it all in to make it tough and go back to work, which is what terrifies me about him is he's taking this great trauma in his life. And even the battle with cancer had to be so hard to be like, all right, let me just shelf this for now and focus on my career, which is so tough yeah. to do anyway. And that was the thing, like when my mom passed away, she was 44. I was in my 20s and I, I didn't grieve at the beginning because I was trying to be the strong one for my younger sister and my dad. And it was years later before I properly grieved. And then even, you know, my dad passed away six years ago and he was in his 70s and he lived a long life. And, and you know, we got to spend time together and it was a little bit different. But, you know, there's still that process. And then um, even like just it's been a month today as we're recording that my mother-in-law passed away. So, you know, and we've become close. And, uh, you know, this is uh, the first one really my wife, both of her parents were alive. And now her mom just passed and, and she's actually going through that right now. So it's it is a, a process and it can take time. And. Uh, like I said, we need to be more respectful. You know, I, I think back in the days of like, um, you know, what it must have been for Ric Flair when his son, Reed, passed away. And then Charlotte, you know, his daughter, Ashley in real life, um, 
you know, they were close. And then she's even said in interviews that she started wrestling because of her brother's dream. She didn't dream to be a wrestler. So, you know, it's like, is she, you know, I often think, you know, I'm not a, a psychologist, but I have no clue. But, you know, I often wonder, is she really still maybe grieving because of that? Because this is not what she wanted to do, but she went for her brother and her dad. And is this been a, a years, you know, 10, 15 years, however long she's been wrestling now, whatever it is, is this still part of the process that she's dealing with for her brother? It's just, it's, it's something that, you know, we both dealt with and think about so much, but there's, it's just, I just, I don't know, man. I get kind of choked up talking about it a little bit, to be honest. And I think that's why a lot of people don't want to do this podcast is because it's like, uh, let's talk about something that's uncomfortable, but it needs to be talked about more. It feels like that's a good way to open up about something. You know what I mean? I get a lot of those quotes that my grandma would leave just sitting around places and I'll pick them up and just, uh, you know, use them in regular life. Like that happens to me a lot. I'll say things and be like, Oh, that was a, my grandma ism. And yeah, man, this <laughs> Roman Reigns dad is a beast too. I'm sure that he was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man with lots of those kinds of things running around too. So hopefully he can take some solace in the man that his dad was, and that'll help him with it too, because I know that as far as like the way I live my life and the way I try to try to live my life, I think I see a lot of my grandma and mom in that too. Whereas, like I said, their mannerisms sometimes end up becoming your mannerisms. Yeah, absolutely. You, you end up doing that. Even sometimes if you don't subconsciously, you know, those, uh, what is it? Those uh, insurance commercial where you become your parents, you know, yeah. And the guy, you know, and that's the thing. We all, I'm, I'm going to be different from my parents. And then as we get older, and especially if they pass away, you're like, gosh, that's exactly what my mom and dad would do. You oh, know, God. And, and, it's so real. It's such a relevant yeah. thing to say. I am just becoming my parents every single day from the way yeah. that my dad breathes when he's upset. <sighs> I, <laughs> I'll catch yeah, myself so, and be like, fuck, yeah. I just did a Terry thing. What am I doing? You never and, want to and become then, you your know, parents, but it just happens, doesn't it? Yeah, and then, you know, I even think about Roman Reigns. Uh, I'm so glad that Roman is with WWE to help him get through this because if he was in AEW uh, with this recent loss, he'd probably be in a few with Christian, and we know where oh, that God. would go. <laughs> it would probably go to Roman Reigns really slapping him in the face because he goes too far. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how much he has to clear with people before he cuts those promos. That's always been my wonder with the Christian Cage stuff is yeah, how much yeah. are you clearing with Nick Wayne before you go into this? Are you just surprising him? Like, hey, come on. You could test your luck, but. <laughs> you know, or is it, you know, is he shooting out date Nick's mom? That's what I want to know. Is he, you know. Is he shooting Why, dating his she, mom? She is the biggest surprise of all that she signed on the dotted line and agreed to this. That's the one that yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay, Nick Wayne's a wrestler. Like, we know that he wants to be a wrestler forever, and he's a prodigy and will be a wrestler forever. But I don't think that she was planned for this originally, which makes it no, even no. funnier that at some yeah. point they had to have that conversation with her. Hey, do you want to be involved in this? Like, we could probably right, get you right. going here if you want to be. And, and you know, I'm, and I know you're a widow and all that, but I'm gonna make fun of your 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 you know your past husband and everything like that. And uh, so yeah, golly, dude, you gotta love that. Uh, even even when Big Boss Man did it, you can't go away from it, man. It's the it's the gimmick <laughs> of the day to make someone yeah. fun of someone's dead father. Yeah, and, you know, and and that'll be the thing. Uh, with Roman coming when he does come back. And like I said, I, you know, thoughts and prayers to Roman and, and yeah. I, I want him to take as much time as he wants. Uh, but when he does come back, you know, can he, cause obviously he'll come back as a baby face and uh, with this whole bloodline 2.0 saga and all that. Uh, but then will he be able to, you know, is he just going to go with it or is he going to, mention his father and the Samoans and the legacy. Is he going to do a Cody Rhodes and talk about his dad? You know, cause Cody mentions dusty quite a bit. I, I don't know if it'll be direct name dropping, but they are setting the table for that as we speak, like uh, Friday night's SmackDown. 
I think the it's it's easy to tell where they're going with the direction the announcing steers you. That's what's so great about uh, Cole is he has a way to steer you in a certain direction. And I think he said three or four times, like, this is not the way that the former bloodline would have ran things. There's no morals in this bloodline, which is something that's very, very interesting, like morals and honesty. Yeah, and okay, and I know that okay. they were a cheating faction, no, okay, but, but okay, there was still but, like... Uh, okay, Michael Cole is forgetting history. Let's remember who the Wild Samoans were managed by for a while. Captain Lou Albano. Like, there was any ever moral fiber in that man. Okay. He was Mario. First of all, there was moral fiber in him, especially when no, he was no. a plumber from New he York. He turned on Cindy Lauper. Okay. He was going to be a Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper, too. <laughs> girls just want to have fun, bud. That's how girls just want to have fun. How can you turn on Cindy Lauper? There's got to be someone. There's got to be someone else other than Cindy Lauper. I know she was the biggest star in the world, but I think I might take Mr. T. <laughs> Oh, Captain Lou would have turned on Mr. T. He'd have took oh. them rubber bands out of his cheek and popped him with it. Yeah. Is that what they're there for? Did he Did he ever actually just take off a rubber band and flip, flip it at somebody? I think he did, it, he did it in high school, his senior year. He was in detention over it. Oh, yeah. Lou, you know better than to do that, Lou. Don't take that rubber band out of your beard. Lou, don't turn that into a shooting gun. Lou, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace to Lou Albano, the greatest Mario. Do you remember that? Am I the only one that has vivid no, memories? I, 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 I remember seeing it, but never watched it. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you the VHS. Don't worry, I got you. No, I don't want it.